you have just been targeted by Leorio's Nen ability, Judgmental Pointing. And the only way to count this is to subscribe to the New World Review for regular and glorious Hunter Hunter updates funneled straight into your YouTube feed. Then, and only then, will Leorio cease to judge you. Hello and welcome to the New World Review, your source for everything anime and manga. And today it's time for some more wonderfully subjective content, as a while ago I decided to name my top 5 favourite characters in Hunter x Hunter, and now for the sake of glorious balance, I feel like it's important that we explore the other side of that coin by examining my least favourite. Now I will say from the outset that this list was nowhere near as easy to make as I thought it might be. As it turns out, there aren't really many characters in Hunter x Hunter that I don't like, even some of the minor and weird ones. I think most of them just get fleshed out and presented in such a brilliant and empathetic way that they become quite difficult to dislike, at least for me. So much so that if I were to make this a top 10 list, then I'd probably have a difficult time filling it. But five sounds, you know, reasonable. And just to give you all a bit of an idea of the criteria for this list, these are going to be my least favorite characters scaled in regards to their importance and presence in the series. So for example, if there's a major character that I don't really like and a minor character I don't really like, then the major character is going to get that spot on this list because I was made to spend more time with them in the series. So I would really have to properly hate a minor character for them to appear here today. So let's not get shocked if you know some prominent figures pop up because, well, it's going to happen. And let's also remember that these opinions are entirely my own and not a personal insult to you if you like who I happen to dislike. That's just the wonders of being human. Plus, I'd also like you to keep in mind that just because a character happens to be one of my least favorite does not necessarily mean that I hate them. If I do feel that strongly, then I'll make sure to let you know. But really, most characters on this list are going to be here through simple dislike or even apathy. And finally, all characters on this list must be canon, because if not, then it would probably be full of the non-canon Hunter Hunterverse. But with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to my top five least favorite characters in Hunter Hunter. Number five. Jing Freaks. All right, I can hear you all uh, ripping your dicks off from here, but just hear me out. I accept that Jing kind of is Hunter Hunter, as without him, there would be no Gon, there would be minimal kite, and there would be no call to action for us to spend the large majority of the series working towards. And for much of Hunter Hunter, rather understandably, we have been striving to find this man, and when we did finally get to him, well, to be completely honest, he was a bit of a disappointment to me. To state this right now, I don't necessarily dislike Jing, not at all. In fact, I find his part in the election arc, as well as the current Dark Continent business, to be endless fascinating. I love how his mind works in rivalry with Pariston's, but when I take a step back from those wonderful scenes, I take a look with what I'm left with, and at the moment, well, it isn't much. We effectively have a deadbeat dad who dresses like a slob and lives only to fulfill his own personal desires. And yes, he probably does have some pretty amazing Nen abilities, which will more than likely make him a phenomenal character to look back on. But at this moment in the story, we don't have any of that. Although I guess to Jing's credit, he was something of a mentor figure to Razor. In fact, you know, I'd say Jing was more of a father to Razor, than he ever was to Gon. And that's what really sells me in regards to putting Jing on this list, which is his attitude towards Gon. The best thing Jing has ever done for Gon was send him on a convoluted mission to find his own father with potential death waiting for him at every single stage. And if Gon did die, well, then Jing wouldn't have been phased at all, as shown by the fact that he didn't even visit Gon in hospital after the Chimera Antar, which to be fair, once again, did lead to my favorite part about Jing's character, which is when he was punched in the face by Leorio. So I don't know, as much as I'm intrigued by Jing's mental battle with Pariston and his mission to go to the Dark Continent, I can't help but have this sense of something of a dislike towards this guy. I don't know, he just isn't a great human being. He's charismatic, sort of, at least to the readers anyway. A lot of the actual residents of the Hunter Hunter world seem to dislike him. And unfortunately, I tend to land on the apathetic side. So sorry, Jing, but uh, well, here you are. Number four, G2. So I think it's fair to say that the Chimera Ants had some really not so great characters, but at the same time, I don't think any of them managed to get on my nerves in the way that Chitu did. And I guess I should say once again that I don't hate Chitu at all. In fact, I really enjoy what his character represents, which is an example of how to completely misuse Nen and create abilities that don't work with your desires at all. And as such, it was always quite funny when Chitu was foiled effectively by himself, but he was a very major player in a very long arc. And sometimes I just didn't want to be watching or reading about Chitu. I suppose if anything, what Chitu serves to do in the series, other than be a moron, is to make everyone else around him look good. Like I am convinced that I only love Moral as much as I do because he made an even bigger fool of Chitu whilst trapped in the Chimera Ants tag Hatsu. And I guess another thing about Chitu is that unlike the other squadron leaders, I was never really afraid of him in any way because he always seemed to be a source of comic relief, which is crazy because Chitu was pretty insanely powerful in the grand scheme of things, but he became a bit of a weird existence to me as a result. And you know, when he was summarily dismissed by Silver Zeldic, my response was, 
was, ah, oh, oh, is that it? I had no strong feeling one way or the other. It was just Chitu here one second and then gone another. Ah, oh, well, that just means we now have time to focus on other characters. That was my thinking anyway. So look, Chitu, I think this is where you belong. Number three. Shia Poof, yet another Chimera Ant gracing this list, and I really have to say that Poof only appears above Chitu due to his significantly greater relevance in the story. Poof is another character that I am very apathetic towards. I find him to be by far the least interesting of the Royal Guard in almost every respect. For example, I was never a fan of his design, his overly emotive nature, and his use of Nen just didn't really capture me in the same way that Yupi or Pito did in all of those areas. I do greatly appreciate his role in the story and the fact that he was used to explore the idea of questioning and even betraying the king, or for the twisted sake of ultimately protecting him, and that element was very, very necessary in making the central stages of the Chimera Ant arc interesting and full of drama. But I guess I just didn't really care for the vehicle that delivered said drama. In many ways, Poof also might be a victim of juxtaposition. I mean, when you're constantly side by side with Meruem, Pito, and Yupi, he will always seem outclassed as a character to me. Like whoever he was with was always the more interesting individual to be focusing on. And you know, on a certain level, I'm sure that we were meant to dislike Poof as well, given that he spent most of his time plotting against Komugi, a character who was so absurdly adorable and slowly converting Meruem into a more human way of thinking. So naturally, when we as an audience see something good happening and a character desperately trying to prevent that good, then it's going to lead to a fair amount of dislike. At least I guess it did in my case anyway. Number two. Tompa. So speaking of characters who were designed to be disliked, this is certainly one of them. As with all characters on this list, I do appreciate what Tompa represents, which was a bit of comedy amongst a very theoretically serious situation that was the Hunter exam. However, he was doomed to me from the start because I'll be honest, I just hate everything about his design. And I don't think I ever got over that. And once again, that was probably the point. Togashi created this overweight, ugly, weird nosed bro who tried to give everyone the shits in order to purposely give the audience the shits. And I don't mind that to an extent, but I think what soured me on this guy was during the third phase of the exam, when he was teamed up with our four protagonists and just continues to be a dick beyond belief. At that point, I understood the character, but I was just over him. I knew that he was an aesthetically unappealing, unredeemable minor antagonist who would never amount to any real story impact, and so I just wanted to move on from Tompa. He simply could not provide us with anything but an obstacle to get to some actual substance in the series. Still, to be perfectly honest, I do kind of prefer Tompa to number one. Again through. So I swear, in a series of almost exclusively fantastic main villains, this guy is a bit of a stain on Hunter x Hunter. And maybe that's a bit harsh, but Genthru really does have some tough contemporaries to stand up to. And in the company of people like Hisoka, Illumi, Saraidnik, Meruem, etc., this guy just doesn't cut it. I mean, Genthru falls very flat in terms of basic motivation, which is killing for the sake of, I guess, killing. He likes committing acts of terrorism, so he does it. Cool, sure. But to me, it just lacks that extra layer of something something, like Saraidnik killing for the sake of art. And even then, he has particular targets or Hisoka engaging in battle for sexual satisfaction, once again, with specific targets. But Genthru just does Genthru things because he's Genthru. He also has by far the most forgettable design of any major antagonist in the story, so much so that I quite legitimately do often forget that he exists when thinking of the villains of this world. And I should say that this has nothing whatsoever to do with the final fight of Gon versus Genthru. I love that conflict, but that love has nothing to do with Genthru. It's more about being a massive fan of exactly how Gon handled himself and and pun intentional there, and how he eventually overcame Genthru. It really is one of Gon's crowning moments in the series, and Genthru just happened to be there for it. And I don't know, I think I just expect a hell of a lot more from a villain that is being charged with helming an arc spanning 65 manga chapters and 16 to 21 anime episodes, depending on if you watch the 2011 version or the 199 anime OVAs respectively. In defense of Genthru though, Greed Island was also a bit of a tricky arc because it focuses a lot on training and it's sandwiched between York New City and the Chimera Ants, which is really not where you want to be in this series because those arcs are both so profoundly memorable pieces of story. Still, I don't know, Genthru is just wholly underwhelming to me. I appreciate that he made Gon look good, but I think he single-handedly makes Greed Island a less than exciting experience to reread or rewatch. He was a very stock standard villain during a time when we needed to follow the Phantom Troop and Genthru just doesn't cut it, which is one of many reasons why he finds himself at the top of this list here today.
And that pretty much does it for my top 5 least favourite characters in Hunter x Hunter. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the New World for you Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share or subscribe, because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans retakes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own least favourite characters in the series. This has been the New World Review, and I'll see you next time. Do you think that Togashi might kill off Karapika at some point? I absolutely do. In fact, Togashi has even stated in an interview that the eventual fate of both Karapika and the Phantom Troop is that they will all die. Now, admittedly, this could be a comical response that gets lost in translation, but I also think that everything we've been given regarding Karapika points to his eventual death, which is actually explored in another one of my videos entitled The End of Karapika, a link to which will be in the description below if you're interested. Can you give us a brief history of what you were thinking you were going to become when you grow up? <laughs> Interesting use of tense there, implying that I haven't grown up already. Then again, to be fair, look, I make anime videos on the internet, so who am I kidding? I have not grown up yet. So when I was a technical child though, the first thing I remember wanting to be was a cartoonist. And we're talking very young, like the ages of five to seven. The issue is that I didn't particularly enjoy drawing at this age, and that was more something I discovered I liked in high school. So pursuing the cartoonist route for me never really took off. And then I spent a great period of my life not knowing a single thing about what I wanted to do, until I saw my first commercial musical when I I was about 16, and I went, huh, that looks like fun. I want to work in theatre. So based on that vague desire, I eventually went to university to study design for TV and theatre, graduated, and began working as a lighting designer, technician, and on the odd occasion, even a stage manager. And eventually, I even did a musical in the very same theatre where I first thought that this career path would be a fun thing to pursue, which was a great, well-rounded experience. In the last few years, I've been pretty disenfranchised by theatre though, and so I've invested more time into other hobbies. One of which is this whole YouTube thing, and that's now very much taking up a huge chunk of my time. So there you go, that's a brief history of the primary things I've wanted to be and what I've ended up as currently.